air power boost for the Indian Air Force. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited will hand over the first light combat aircraft Tejas, a twin-seater trainer version, to the Indian Air Force in Bengaluru. Minister of State for Defense, Air Marshal, Air Chief Marshal Vivek Ram Chaudhary and many others will be present there. In fact, as part of the light combat aircraft contract between the HAL and the Indian Air Force, the Defence Public Sector Unit has to supply eight twin-seater trainer aircraft to the force. With a developed fly-by-wire flight control system, indigenous AESA radar, beyond visual range missiles, modern electronic warfare suit, along with air-to-air -air refueling, Tejas MK-1A is expected to meet the operational requirements of the IAF. Recently, IAF Chief VR Chaudhary reviewed the development project of the Tejas Mark 1A with all stakeholders highlighting the aircraft as the flag bearer of the IAF's efforts towards indigenization. Aeronautics Limited will hand over the first light combat aircraft twin seater trainer version aircraft to the Indian Air Force in Bengaluru. India today, Shivaru shares the experience of flying the LCA Tejas. Take a look. We had uh, signed a contract for 83 uh, LCA Mark 1As. What we are looking at is now to supplement that contract with 97 additional aircraft. So it will bring the total to about 180 LCA Mark 1As. The um, contract value will be a little over 1.15 lakh crores, I would assume. India has struck back. Pakistan has been taught a bitter lesson for its terror misadventure in Bulwama. The aircraft in the spotlight is the Mirage 2000 fighters from Gwalior, aircraft that India bought from France back in the 1980s. But the spotlight is also shifting to another aircraft. And this is an aircraft that is India's very own. Locked, loaded, and ready for battle. This little jet has also had one hell of a month. Bomb's gone. From putting on a fearsome show of strength at the Vayu Shakti firepower exercise, to enthralling the crowds at Bengaluru's recent Aero India show. This compact fighter, like the Mirage 2000, is ready for a fight. And in the aftermath of Pulwama, as India and India's Air Force teaches Pakistan a bloodied lesson, as Indian fighter squadrons remain on operational alert, India today was invited to meet the Air Force's newest member. Well, not just meet, but actually fly the light combat aircraft, Tejas. And that too, just a day after the fighter jet received final operational clearance for combat service. First things first, I obviously couldn't wear just about anything for the flight. A team from the Tejas program helps me get into full fighter pilot gear. From the flying suit, to the boots, the G suit to counter the dangerous levels of acceleration force or G in a fast jet. And finally the fighter helmet with an oxygen mask. Now fully kitted out, I get to meet the man who will be commanding the flight. And given the circumstances, I couldn't have possibly asked for a greater pilot to be in charge. This is Air Vice Marshal N. Tiwari, Chief of the National Flight Test Center that oversees the testing and proving process of the LCA Tejas. 
Well, given what India has just done with its Mirage 2000s across the border, Air Vice Marshal Tiwari also happens to be a Kargil war hero, the war in which India's Mirages were last used in anger. Air Vice Marshal Tiwari led missions in Mirage fighters to bomb Pakistani positions on the famous Tiger Hill two decades ago. Briefed and ready for the mission, we head out to the tarmac. Okay. On a scorching hot Bengaluru day, as we reach the flight line, the LCA Tejas jets finally loom into view. A pair of them from the actual Air Force squadron that flies them now. Cleared to enter the fighter, I get a full cockpit brief by the ground team. Okay. You want me to hold this, huh? Hold just hold it. Uh, on it okay. Let me just, I'm making feet like, okay? With helmet on and oxygen mask checked, the canopy is lowered and the jet's American F-404 engine is powered on. After several minutes of checks, we taxi out. The cockpit is a cozy little space with a multitude of flat panel displays designed to give pilots every possible piece of information they could need while in the air. Then we wait for clearance to take off. Once in the air, the pilot instantly banks sharply to the right, demonstrating the LCA's excellent responsiveness and agility in the air. Cruising out west of Bengaluru, the jet is throttled up and prepared for a list of maneuvers to demonstrate just how nimble this jet is. From a barrel roll, to a high G loop, to a few minutes where I'm given control of this fighter jet. The fully Indian control laws are super evident in this fighter's supremely excellent reflexes. The jet we're flying doesn't have weapons for obvious reasons, but don't let that fool you. The LCA Tejas already packs a formidable punch. The Tejas is already proven on a variety of weapons, including beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles, heat-seeking close combat missiles, laser-guided or gravity bombs of the kind that were used in Balakot, and future weapon fits that include the Brahmo supersonic cruise missile and indigenous Astra long-range air-to-air weapon. After 30 minutes in the air, we return to base. A smooth short landing slowed with a brake parachute. From start to finish, I've spent just over two hours with Team Tejas. And it has begun to become clear why a fighter jet that was once derided is now being embraced by a new generation of Indian fighter pilots, just like the Mirage 2000 once was in the 1980s and 90s. If the LCA Tejas began as a project to replace India's MiG-21s, the time to do that is now. So we've just flown in the light combat aircraft Tejas, a fighter that is India's very own project and a homegrown aviation development effort. It has taken many years to come to fruition. It's possible that you've seen a lot of criticism about delays in this aircraft becoming a reality, but the aircraft you're looking at now are part of squadron service. These are aircraft that are already flying with the Indian Air Force and not many people actually know that. The numbers are still small, but finally the Indian Air Force will be operating upwards of 120 such fighters, both single and twin seat configurations. Now India today has had the rare privilege of flying in an LCA Tejas and experiencing firsthand the flying qualities, the systems on board and the many reasons why the new pilots flying this homegrown Indian fighter love this aircraft so very much. And remember, it's not just a showpiece. 
This is an aircraft that was recently in the Vayu Shakti firepower demonstration. And since it's in squadron service, it's not just a castle in the air. It's an aircraft that can drop bombs, can fire missiles, and can deploy weapons at standoff ranges. In many true senses, this is a multi-role fighter aircraft, very much what the Indian Air Force needs to stem its squadron depletion numbers. The LCA Tejas's big journey has really and honestly truly just begun. There's a long road ahead, final operation clearance for the first iteration of the Tejas has just come. There's going to be an improved version that's going to be inducted in much larger numbers and then a brand new aircraft called the medium weight fighter which is derived from the original Tejas that will be possibly populating upwards of 200 fighters in the Indian Air Force. Well, the LCA Tejas took its first flight back in 2001. It was Atal Bihari Vajpayee who christened it the Tejas, Radiance. Well, for India's very own aviation effort, this hopefully will be an era of Radiance. With the LCA Tejas here at the Yelhanka Air Base, with video journalist Shiva Murthy, this is Shiv Arur for India Today.